everyone. Um, I'm up a little bit early today. I've been driving for oh, about an hour now, so it's not nearly as early as it was when I first woke up. Uh, but today I'm driving out to the Digital Imaging Show in Milton Keynes to talk about composites. And while I'm driving, you do what you do and you think. And it got me thinking because one of the questions I get asked at every teaching thing I do, every speaking thing I do, every workshop that I do is where did you get your inspiration from? How did you develop your style? Um, and those are very good questions and they're very hard questions to answer. The inspiration question is very easy to answer. How I develop my style I think is a bit hard. Um, but I want to talk about the inspiration and lately I've seen a lot of talk about inspiration and imitation and it, if you were to just purely go off of what you see on different forums, on Facebook, on Twitter, you would come to the conclusion that imitation and inspiration are almost the same thing and you would find that imitation is massively frowned upon in not just the photographic field and basically the, the creative fields and I guess in general probably in business in general but I want to talk about it in the photographic and or the creative fields but let's talk about inspiration for a moment so if you were to look at my photography and you know your general big name photographer so to speak I think it's fairly obvious who my inspiration is so my inspirations would be Joel Grimes, Tim Tatter, Dave Hill, Caleb Cool, Joey L. Um, not necessarily in that order either, by the way. <laughs> but those would be what I would consider my big inspirations in, with my photography. This is where I want to talk about imitation. One of the ways that I learned how to do what I do. What I used to do is I would take a photo that I just loved. I would look at this photo and I'd be like, oh my god, I love that photo. How did he do that photo? And the first thing I would do is break it down, looking at it and going, right, how did he like this? Why is it composed like this? Why is the person posed like this? Why is this background being used? Why is this location being used? And I would look at all those things and try to break them down to their their simplest form then what I would do is I'd be like you know what the only way that I'm really gonna learn how to do this is by doing it and so I would go and I would try to recreate that photo now I'm not saying that I would see say a picture of 50 cent done by Joey L uh, and say right I'm gonna completely recreate that photo that's not quite what I'm talking about with the invitation. What I am talking about though is I would look at that photo of 50 Cent and I'd be like, right, I want to create a photo that has this same look. And I would go out and I would shoot something that was lit the same way, kind of posed the same way, and then the finished result would have the same sort of look. It would, it, it may have been an exact copy, so to speak, with a different subject. It may have been something that was just extraordinarily similar. But by doing that, I learned shitloads. I learned how to light. I learned how to pose. I learned how to compose. And I learned how to think about creating a photo. And that was key. And that is why I say imitation is not a bad thing. Imitation is probably the greatest learning tool you can have. Um, where I do have a problem with imitation is when the photographers just shoot somebody's entire portfolio and make another photographer's style their own style. That's wrong, and that's not what it should be about. What you should do is try to recreate photos from a multitude of photographers that you like that have different things about them that you like so that you can learn new skill sets and incorporate little tidbits of somebody else's style into yours 
and then you get a mixed melting pot of things that make yours and define your style. So another thing that I see going on is, um, you see, I've seen recently quite a few photographers recreating, you know, some of the master painters' portraits as as photographs, and I think it's brilliant. Um, and this is another one where if you go on to, you know, different places on the internet, you'll see loads of different people bitching and moaning about it, saying, oh, they're not doing anything original, they're just copying the master painters, blah, 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 blah. It's a bunch of horseshit. Um, what they're doing is learning from the best in, in a way that you can't learn from them. You, you won't be able to go and get uh, a one-to-one -one mentoring session with Rembrandt. That's not going to happen. Um, but you can learn a crap load by looking at his, his paintings and trying to replicate what he's done. And again, I think it's key to say you're going to only take bits of their style and incorporate it into yours. Um, and what I've seen some of these photographers doing is they're recreating paintings from a, a, a whole mix of master painters. And what, what better way to learn? And that's where imitation is a good thing. But anyways, I'm going to let you go with that. I just want to recap here. Fine line between inspiration and imitation. Imitation is not a bad thing. Um, as long as it's really done correctly. Try to recreate photos from a few different photographers and you will learn a lot um, about how to think about a photo. That's, that's the biggest thing. Um, you'll learn how to think about a photo when you go to recreate it. But don't go around and just become a clone of somebody else. That's just wrong and it's, well, it's, it's shitty to be honest. Till next time anyways, be sure to check out the website. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, most of it's at George Fairbird. There'll be some links at the end of the video anyways uh, with some other videos to watch. So make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to make sure I do these a whole lot more often. Uh, so anyways, till next time, see you later. Bye.